Okay, so time's come for a, a biggie, question seven. And here we're going to determine the strain components with three principal strains, maximum shearing strain. And then do stuff with stresses. So we've got a strain gauge here. We've just got strain values. What we're going to do. We're looking for um, uh, the strain in the x-direction, y-direction, and in the xy-state. So we've got plane stress going on here. We're on a surface, and we're trying to set up a stress state on the surface um, kind of thing. So uh, the only question equations that we can use are going to be the, the strain transformation equation. So what we can start doing is writing them out. Unfortunately, they are not in a form that we can really use them. So we've got epsilon 1 is going to be epsilon x cos and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that, uh, well, follow the diagram and define that my one direction to be the same as my x direction. So the shift to get the transformation from this one, or rather from the x, I suppose, to the one is going to be zero. Oops, uh, I'm shifting anti-clockwise zero degrees. So I put in zero into the equation. And what I notice here is, uh, although when I substitute the values in, I'm going to end up with some zeros. But in effect, I've kind of appear to have three unknowns before I substitute my values in. And one known, I know that value. So I can repeat this equation again two more times, and then I'm going to have three knowns on the left-hand side and three unknowns on the right-hand side. So let's do that. So let's look at the next epsilon. So to shift from the x-axis to this position here, I need to rotate anti-clockwise by 60 degrees. So let's put that into the equation. And now the final one, well, to shift from the x-axis all the way around to the direction of the third strain gauge is going to be 120 degrees. So obviously the next stage is substituting our trig values. Uh, we've got special special terms here, aren't they? Because it's, 60 and 120, that sounds like special numbers. So substitute them in and um, uh, uh, we end up with Epsilon 1 equals epsilon x, as we'd expect. Epsilon 2 equals quarter. Put this in. Yeah, end up with a half. Half times half, quarter. Here we've got a third. So we've got root 3 over 4. Just use your calculator to do the maths. Uh, 
something looks very similar here. Quarter. Three quarters. Oops, not minus. And the only difference is we've got a minus now, root three, root four. And what we want to do is work out what epsilon x, epsilon, uh, epsilon y, and the gamma xy terms are. So well, we've done the first one, and that's going to be epsilon one. So I've got a kind of a matrix system here. I need to invert it, find solutions. It depends how you, how you want to do it. My, my approach was to add the equations, add these two equations together, and also then I think I, um, and then I did a, a substitution. So, depends what you want to do. I uh, not particularly elegantly solved this by adding the two bottom equations together to get rid of, rid of the gamma term. And this one here is a nice simple one to substitute in, I guess. So I substituted that in, rearranged it to find epsilon y. So now we've got epsilon y in terms of the epsilon 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and what do we need next? So we've got epsilon 1, we've got, we, sorry, we've got epsilon x, epsilon y. Now we need to find this term here. So what can we do to do that? The first thing I did was to get rid of all this junk, was then to do epsilon to take away epsilon three. So that all goes and then you end up with root three over two gamma xy. Uh, so just rearrange that. And then we got gamma xy equals two over root three epsilon 2, epsilon 3. So the the next stage is really is to take your numbers, or actually have the free principal strains. Yeah, so the next stage, we still we still haven't found them because we, we're all looking for the numbers. So we're gonna, the next stage is to substitute your numbers in. Therefore, we can say epsilon x equals 60 microstrain, substitute in here, and you end up with epsilon y equals 780 microstrain. So what I'm doing is taking these numbers, substituting them in here, and here, substitute your numbers in, and you end up with gamma. xy is not such a nice number, 692.5. 8.2 microstrain. Right, so that's part A done. Part B, the three principal strains. Okay, so this is a, uh, you can imagine it like a balloon surface. So we're going to get three, stra uh, three strains, okay, because it's on a surface or something. So imagine your balloon being pulled out, pulled out, and then maybe m moving out with the stress. Um, so the first um, strains are fine just by using my formula book. 
and using the values that I've got. So I will use epsilon max min. You could do this using the Moore's circle and whatnot. I prefer using equations. So they are in your formula book. I'm going to work out that that root there, and you get four twenty plus or minus four nine nine five nine nine ish. And so we found two of the strains just by using that, substituting those values in, and you end up with 919.6 gamma and minus 79.6 gamma um, microstrain. Okay, um, so the, probably the easiest thing next would maybe to do uh, a Moore's circle using. Um, uh, the strain, but I'm going to stick with using equations. So how would you do that using equations? So you start off by saying that we're going to define the maximum strain to be based upon the maximum stress component and use the Poisson's uh, ratio to for the other term and that the minimum strain is going to be based upon the minimum stress okay so that's going to give me two components which are on the surface, but we're then going to have an orthogonal component based upon these stress values. And that will simply be based upon how much uh, Poisson's ratio is pushing something out. So that would be my orthogonal component. Okay, so the important thing is here is you, is you, you need to identify that you are dealing with a plane stress problem. In some stress courses, you'd have these equations worked out for you, but uh, in our formula booklet, it's uh, we've only got the basic stuff to play with. So you would need to know something like that, which we don't actually have in your formula book, but that's fairly obvious um, statements. Then you can rearrange these. And as I said, most textbooks might have these things, but I'll leave you to do the algebra. But you end up with, because I'm running out of space, you end up with um, the orthogonal is based upon usually you have a minus there the maximum strain and the minimum strain on the surface okay so what you want to do there is uh, my approach was to um, or did I do that? I added these two equations together and then I substituted in this term into the addition of those two equations. So you end up with this this expression. Substitute your numbers in. Did 
maximum is 19.6 minus 79.6. 79 so that becomes minus 3, 4, 3 point one micro strain. So that was um, our three principal strains and unfortunately the, the way that I got there uh, stick with equations was I used this set of equations which is not in your formula book and then rearranged this so that I could find the orthogonal term and as I said in some formula booklets you would be given that for a plain stress problem. Okay What next? So we'll go to a new page. The maximum shearing stress strain, sorry. So for this, I'm just going to um, kind of do a more strain diagram just to illustrate what we're talking about here. So we've got maximum strain. minimum strain and that's epsilon okay and uh, there we've got um, that term there so that's what we're looking for so you can see that the circle is obviously two radius of that is going to be the radius of this term here. So I can see that the radius is given as, and that should be a half. Um, max. by two okay uh, yeah I think that's what I need to say there so we've got those values so we can work out uh, what the strain is which is I'm going to give by those two terms so we're substituting in the nine one nine point six take away 79.6 and that gives me 999.2 microstrain. Now the question is, is that going to be your maximum value? Well, possibly, but possibly not because we've also going to have to consider the other plane. So we've only looked at uh, how this is behaving in the XY plane. So let's look at the other plane. So what we we'll do for that, very similar equation, we we'll go for xz. Okay, so now I need to look back at my previous results. Now, notice in my previous results, I have um, on the surface here, uh, 919 and minus 79. So that's on my XY surface. The one coming out in the orthogonal direction, coming out in the Z direction, is going to be minus 334. So that means that the maximum 
for stuff that's happening on the XZ plane will be, that's the maximum, and that will be the minimum. However, for the XY plane, that will be the maximum, and that will be the minimum. So I need to use this value as my minimum. That's a minus. And that is going to give me a value of 1,262.7 microstrains. So obviously of the two, this is the larger. So that will be the maximum value that we want to use for part C. OK, part D, the three principal stresses. Things actually get a bit easier now. So three principal stresses, let's go back to my equation that I'm going to use. I'm going to use that one. that one okay again this is another you end up driving another formula which is sometimes given the standard in some stress books but we have to derive it ourselves so to work this one out what did I do I um I substituted in um Max, max. So I substituted it in, in um, the min term here into this equation, rearranged it, and you end up with, again, I think I'll skip the algebra. I really don't think you're going to get something this complicated, but okay, so you, you do this, and then you can do the reverse, substituting them the um, the max, the min term into this equation, and then rearrange it, and then you will end up with this expression. So we've got values there which we can plug in. Um, uh, the maximum value is going to be this one here, 919, and the minimum value is um, so we're both dealing with the stresses that are on the surface. So the minimum value will be this one here. Okay. So I'll just shoot those values in, and I got values of 195.8 megapascals. And a minimum stress of... Uh, 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 40.9 megapascals. And what about the orthogonal stress? 
Well, we're on the surface, so we're on the surface of a balloon, as it were. So there can't be any stress on the surface, so the surface would be moving. So the other stress is zero. Okay, so we found the three principal stresses for part D and E. Whether parts yield or not using the maximum distortion energy criterion. The maximum distortion energy criterion is the von Mises criterion. So the form that we've got it in on our formula book is like, well, actually it should be, there's a typo. There should be a square root there, but it should be fairly obvious. So square root Then substitute your values in. Um, obviously, one stress component you can use is 195, and the other stress component is going to be the 40.9. OK. And that gives me a from this is stress yield of 179 megapascals. So I'm going to compare that with my actual yield strength of 450. So I expect this thing to be safe. Okay. Uh, that's it.